Good morning, everybody. We will give our folks a moment to join. Thank you for those of you who are tuning in so far. We'll just give it another couple of minutes while people get in. All right, thank you all again. Um, pleasure to host our first Instagram Live. Um, we're gonna go over a few things today. So first off, we'll kind of go through an introduction, a welcome to Chicago Plants. For those of you who have not been to our store yet, we will walk around, give you a tour. Um, the big thing today is gonna be the giveaway announcement. So if you guys are entered, um, stay tuned. If you have not entered yet, you still do have time. Um, I'll be announcing the giveaway winner at the end of this live stream, so feel free to enter your comments um, to get in on that. Um, and then we'll be going over a few questions. People submitted um, some questions to our story yesterday. Um, so if you did so, we'll try and address everybody who submitted anything. And feel free to, if you have any thoughts or questions that you want to submit uh, comments to, we'll try and address everybody. Um, so we'll get started here. Welcome to Chicago Plants. Here is a beautiful view of our plant wall. We'll uh, navigate over there so everyone can fully appreciate the beauty that is the living plant wall. You'll see there are a lot of varieties. We have some Colothia in there as well as some Schefflera. You notice all the neon and the jade pothos. The living plant wall is certainly a focal point to the Chicago plants establishment, and it's something that we take great pride in. It's a very picturesque thing. So here is the store. For those of you who have not been in, we are right here on North Avenue between Western and Milwaukee, just shy of the six corners. It's a beautiful day today, all things considered. A good day to get plants. It's not too cold that you can walk home without worrying about things freezing on the way. Uh, if you look here, we have our succulent and cactus table here in the front. That's where we like to put the things where you can get the sunlight right here. Um, a lot of our varieties that are kind of the pet friendly, the six inch varieties, those that, you know, make good gifts. A lot of people like all of these collages. You'll start to see a lot of the larger varieties as well. Um, so we'll walk you through a few of the sections of the store here in the middle we kind of showcase some of the new items that we have in you'll notice some of these calathia up front as well as these eglionema brilliant and they are quite brilliant and if we walk over here we just had this mural done by the very talented is mose and you'll notice all the beautiful pastel colors as well as the plants that were illustrated here so we have a great amount of appreciation and thanks to give to Ismos for that beautiful piece of work. And as we navigate here into the back of our store, you'll notice some of the ZZ plants, all of the great low light varieties for those of us that live in garden unit apartments or areas that we just don't get as much light as we'd want. We make sure that we have varieties in store for anybody. And lastly, here in the back, we have some of our larger cacti here are the pencil cactus, the fire stick variety. We have the standard pencil cactus here, probably the largest cactus we have in store, close to four, a little close to five feet tall. And then last but not least, here we have our prickly pear cacti, all of them with these beautiful new budding growth coming out of them. And then in the window, some variegated prickly pear as well as the snow white, making sure that everything here gets as much light as possible with the southern facing windows. Um, so that's kind of a brief overview of the look and feel of the store. You may notice right now we do have some LED grow lights on. 
we try and supplement the lighting while you guys aren't in store just to make sure that a lot of the varieties that need a little more light get it while you guys aren't here. Um, it can always be difficult managing kind of where things are placed in the store and making sure everything is getting enough light. You know, we'd love to just have ceilings full of windows and all the light that we can, but even at your home, it's good to supplement with grow lights and it's different than it was five, 10 years ago. They're really easy to come by. You can find simple varieties like what we have here on Amazon pretty cheaply and, and they work quite well. In fact, a lot of the plants end up doing better with the grow lights than just with the ambient lighting as they are red, blue LED lights. Um, we're gonna probably do another post on our blog or at least another live stream to go over grow lights. A lot of people do have questions on them. Um, so we'll try and address that if we can in a future stream because it's just a great way if you don't have great lighting at home, you can carry any plants you want, grow anything you want at home with supplemental grow lights. So that is the brief introduction to our store. Um, we're gonna try and keep an eye on comments like I said, but first I wanna try and address a few of the questions that we had submitted to us. And I wanna start out here. We had somebody with a Diffenbachia that was leaning. Um, and so this is, it's an interesting issue because phototropism occurs really with all of our plants naturally. And so phototropism is the tendency that plants have to gravitate towards wherever the light is. Um, and in this case, you know, this plant might not have uh, been in a new spot, might have been just placed here. And wherever the light is, oftentimes you're going to notice it trying to seek out wherever that window is. Um, the best recommendation that we have to folks, especially with, you know, certain varieties that exhibit phototropism more than others, the ficus lyrata is one, um, that if you don't have it turning every time you water, you're going to notice it growing in one direction. So the best way, if you do notice a plant is stretching towards wherever a light source is, just make sure every time you water it, you're rotating it a quarter of the way, uh, with respect to the pot, because that's the only way you're going to prevent it from leaning you're gonna be able to give it more adequate lighting kind of on all sides of it. So just give it a good 90 degree twist every time you give it a watering and that'll kind of even out its foliage growth. So that is that Diffenbachia. We've had a lot of questions submitted to us with respect to Olive, the plant store dog here at Chicago Plants. Now Olive is Maggie, Maggie's dog and She's a sweetheart. Um, if you have not had the opportunity to meet her personally, um, you're missing out because Olive is just a great dog. And to answer a few questions here, no, Olive is not a full-time employee, but she is the mascot of Chicago Plants. Um, and as far as uh, her involvement in the store, Olive's here to just make sure that everybody's happy, feeling welcomed when they come in. It's nice to see a dog. Um, so yes, Olive is the mascot of Chicago plants and we, we love her dearly. Now, sorry about that. Um, with respect to Lika, so Lika is something that can be used really effectively if you are looking to propagate. We actually have some here in the shop. And so this stuff here, it works as a great medium if you have a plant that hasn't necessarily taken root yet. And it's just these clay pebbles. And what you can do with that is if you have something that doesn't have established roots, rather than just putting it right into soil where it might end up kind of drowning, um, a lot of plants that don't have established root structures will not have the opportunity to do so if they're just thrown right into a traditional soil mix with like heavy peat moss and organic material. Um, Lika offers a better opportunity for plants to grow, expand their roots and kind of develop a, a more established root structure in an environment that's more suitable for them. Um, Lika is not necessarily a, an end all with the plant. You, you'll actually be able to see once it's developing the roots where you feel it's adequately taken root in the Lika. A lot of times I do recommend that folks then do a repot and actually put it into soil because it's going to survive the best in its optimal soil medium. The leak is more of a short-term solution while you're just looking to propagate or get a root uh, structure more established. 
Um, so let's see here what else we have in our... T- so we have a question here from Brenda Lee um, regarding why did I start this plant shop? Um, so I'll kind of dive into how this became a thing. Um, so we opened in September of this last year. Um, I personally have always been a plant person. I grew up watching my grandmother take washcloths to wipe down all of the leaves in our house when she was watching me when I was just a child. I spent a lot of time with my grandmother over the summers and I was always infatuated with how much care she put forth in making sure that plants at our house were doing okay. Um, and it was something that just like always struck me. I kind of followed her around as she did this. And I've also, you know, through my grandmother, my mother has always been someone that carried house plants. And I very much appreciated having that around the house, even when I was just eight or nine years old. Um, so it was just like always a part of me. And I went to school, decided I'd go become an accountant, decided I didn't like being an accountant. And In July of this last year, after losing my job in the midst of COVID, I realized, you know what, it's not the time or the place anymore to continue doing things that we don't like to do. And so I decided, why not try and open a plant shop? And so that's how Chicago Plants came to be. Um, I acquired my first plants probably 10 years ago after the passing of my brother. You can imagine a lot of floral arrangements are sent to the family, and, and a lot of those came with, you know, little stems of uh, ficus elastica, of an eglionema. And that's how I acquired my first plants were in the passing of my brother that I took on a lot of these beautiful varieties that, you know, might be pretty standard um, today, but I've been growing them ever since. And it really just stuck with me that I had this part of him that I was able to continue caring for. Um, And so that kind of just really reinvested my thought that, hey, it is time to do something a little different give this plant shop a try. And I really have the community, the Wicker Park, Bucktown area to thank for making Chicago plants a thing that's still here. Um, A lot of people have thought it's completely crazy to open a shop in the midst of COVID. But that being said, I'm glad that I did it. I have never been more fulfilled in what I'm doing. And I think that we can all kind of learn something in terms of how we go about our lives and plants are a great way to help us as individuals grow. I'm really sorry about that pun. Um, So that being said, uh, I think before we get to the giveaway winner, we've had some folks looking to learn a little more about what we do with our basement here at the shop. So needless to say, it's always hard to make sure we carry enough of the popular varieties on hand. We're reconnected. And this beautiful area down here is our grow room. Now, you might just see this as an unfinished basement, but we do try here in the shop to make sure that all of your popular varieties that go quickly are always kept on hand. And so we have the folks over at Chicago Roots and Hydroponics in Irving Park to thank for kind of helping us out. I I didn't have much experience with using grow lights prior in my life. And talking to those guys, they were so helpful in making sure that we knew what we were doing in terms of getting a grow light that would work best for our plants. And so down here, you're going to see a lot of the stuff that, you know, goes pretty quickly in the shop. And we can always make sure we have more of it on hand to carry up into the store for you guys. Um, And believe it or not, a lot of the stuff that we put down here in the basement ends up doing better than when we have it in the shop. Because it's just an optimal grow environment down here with perfect lighting we control the humidity really well with this barrier that's installed um so it's kind of just this mini greenhouse down here i would live down here if i could it's quite nice but the plants are all so happy and it works out nicely for us to make sure we can continue to bring stuff up for you guys um to answer a recent comment we do delivery for larger plants um we have a store pickup truck that acts as our delivery vehicle and we've done everything from one of these little lady rapsis palms here to the pride and joy the large 14 inch pot fishtail palm and everything in between we'll make sure it gets to your door so yes we do deliver larger plants we do have one other question here that i think i neglected to address Okay, we have, why do succulents eventually die? I always follow the rules. 
I'm happy to address this question. Now, I mentioned my mother, who is my plant inspiration. Um, she's someone that I, I think she still is caring for the same plants that she had around when I was a kid. And believe it or not, the only plants I've ever seen her kill are succulents. Most people think that they're this, like, hardy, you know, everlasting plant that you can't kill. That is just so far from the truth. And it's something that I rarely recommend when someone says they're just getting into plants, they start with a succulent because... For one, most people don't have the light for a succulent. It's really something that unless you have a ton of bright light, a self-facing window, you're not going to have enough light for it. And folks who think like, hey, I can just throw this in the bathroom and don't worry about it, that's not how succulents work. They need as much light as possible. And unless they're getting that, you're going to notice that they're just not thriving. They're getting leggy. They're stretching for the light. That's the biggest issue with regards to succulents and why you might have issues killing them. The second issue is people's misconception that you can water them like the rest of your plants. Um, succulents are desert varieties, and in the desert, it doesn't get much rain. Just like that, you don't want to water your succulent too much. Um, at home, I'm typically only watering mine once a month if they're sitting in a windowsill. I do have some under a grow light, and that allows me to water them every two-ish weeks, but they're getting a lot of intense bright light. So with regards to that question, it kind of gives an overarching... Um, perspective on watering and how your light situation is going to dictate that. Um, it's not the kind of thing that I can just tell somebody, hey, water this every seven days, because ultimately that's not going to be a universal rule based on what your light situation is, your humidity at home. If you have drafty air vents, there are just so many factors of that equation when it comes to how often you water something. Um, I always say the finger test is the way to do it. You know, make sure you feel the soil is drying out. But moreover, you'll just learn your plants eventually. I think that's really the biggest takeaway when it comes to watering schedules. Never feel like, you know, you're tied to a set amount of days. Always be flexible. Learn your plant. I'm to the point with most of my plants that I can just pick them up, and I know by the weight whether or not it needs water, by how much water is still in the soil. So I hope that helps that poor succulent owner. Okay, we have from Isaac Instas, Instas here, what plant do you recommend for a first-time plant owner? And that is a great question because a lot of folks come in here, and I think especially because of COVID, people are getting into plants for the first time in their life, and we want to help them make sure that they have a plant that they're going to help thrive, not just survive. You know, plants are a, they're like a pet. You want to see them do well. So for a first-time plant owner, the biggest probably the easiest one that I can recommend is going to be a snake plant variety. Um, they are like succulents in that they don't need a lot of water, but unlike them, they just don't need a lot of light either. So that's why these guys right here, you'll notice are in this very dimly lit area of our store. We have our larger variety here in this antique dresser. Snake plants are wonderful. They're going to be one of the best air purifying plants that you can find but they don't have really a lot of the other fuss that you're going to find with, let's say, a ficus lyrata or a bird of paradise, things that need more light, and they're just not going to be suitable for everybody's home. So that's my number one recommendation would be a variety of a snake plant. Now, that being said, let's say you already have a snake plant. You're looking to take that next step up. Most of the philodendron varieties, believe it or not, are not that hard either. I know that the monstera is often something that is seen as this, you know, very imposing, difficult to care for plant, but it couldn't be further from the truth. These guys grow like weeds in most of South America and they do just fine with very little intervention. They're also one that does like a little more shade. So even if your light is not adequate, you can still grow a monstera. So that would be the next step up. I know that they're just the most like ubiquitous plant when you're looking on plant Instagram or anything else, you'll always see a monstera. They're beautiful, they're easy to grow. So that's a good step up from a snake plant if you're looking for it. We'll look here at one or two more questions before we get to the giveaway winner here. Okay, we have um, right here, I got a fiddle leaf as a gift, um, and it has some fruit flies in the soil. Should I repot? What kind of soil? So first, no, do not repot for a couple of reasons. For one, it's not the best thing to do a repot here in the winter. Um, plants like us are dormant in the winter and just, you know, sitting around with Netflix. 
they don't need the, I should say, they don't want the stress of being thrown into a new pot and having to take root in it because ultimately that's a stressful experience for a plant. And by doing that in the winter, they're not in their peak stage for taking root and growing actively into that new pot. So first and foremost to that individual, the fiddle leaf fig, do not repot that plant. As it pertains, however, to the fungus gnat issue that you may have, that also kind of in conjunction with the winter comment is very common. Um, those same fungus gnats that might just survive outside during the warmer months, they're looking for warm, wet places to take home over the winter. So if you didn't notice you had a fungus gnat problem for the rest of the year, a lot of times when the colder months come around, that's when you'll start noticing them. Um, and the biggest way to prevent that is either one, making sure that you use, you know, you're only watering your plant when they need to be watered because if they're being overwatered, that's just making a really great home for those fungus gnats to live. And I know how frustrating that can be once you have them. Um, you know, you can take all the preventative measures, feel like you're doing the right things. Once you get fungus, gnat, fungus gnats though, they're a bit of a nuisance. Thankfully, they're not going to kill your plant. It's more of a symbiotic relationship that they share with it and that they live in the soil, but they're not actually gnawing on the plant. Um, so right here, we do carry in store, and you can find this anywhere. This right here, house plant insect control, systemic house plant insect control. These are granules that you sprinkle into the soil. And it's just like, you know, you're using salt or pepper. You sprinkle that over the soil before you water a lot of times with the fungus gnats, you can put the little sticky traps into it, and that's going to basically take care of the existing ones that you have, but it's not dealing with the root cause, which a lot of times is that they laid eggs in the soil. And even if you trap a lot of them on a sticky thing, you're still gonna see more of them popping up. It's very frustrating. You'll feel like you got rid of them all with your sticky traps, but you need to get to the root of the problem with something like that systemic houseplant control a lot of people who have chronic fungus gnats issues will just use it year round. Monthly, you can sprinkle a little of that onto your soil when you water. It just makes sure that it seeps into the soil. Those fungus gnat eggs that might be there are eliminated. And that way you're dealing with the problem where it started rather than kind of just, you know, masking it by getting rid of the ones that are already in the air. So I know how frustrating that is. Fungus gnats are not something that is fun to deal with. All right, one last question here from LK Thome. We have, are Eglionema super sensitive to water that isn't distilled? My tips are yellow, but I don't think that it's overwatering. So that's a great question. Um, as far as Eglionema are concerned specifically, they're not actually one that's too sensitive to the hard tap water that we have here in Chicago. I water my Eglionema with tap water and they really don't mind. Um, Yellow tips in an Eglionema is almost always going to be overwatering. They are a plant that, believe it or not, does a really good job with drought tolerance. Um, they're not one that you want to let totally dry out. You're going to notice a drooping leaf. But that being said, with the Eglionema, if you are seeing yellowing in the leaves, that's almost surely going to be overwatering. And you just want to maybe bring it back by, if you're watering every 7 to 10 days, bring that to every 10 to 12. Um, they are one that really let you know when there's an issue. If you're underwatering it, they're gonna droop. If you're overwatering it, the leaves are gonna turn yellow. Um, but as it pertains to using non-tap water, so either distilled or purified water, typically I'm gonna recommend that for Calathea first and foremost. Um, we've all dealt with yellowed or crispy tips on our Calathea. They are quite dramatic and they like the best water quality. Um, so that's going to be the one variety that I at home am always using filtered water. Um, the alternative, if you don't want to burn out your Brita filter is just letting your tap water sit out overnight. Um, for a lot of the plants that for Cena varieties as well, that can be a little more sensitive to tap water. They all appreciate water that doesn't have the chemicals that come straight from the tap. And so by just letting your water sit out overnight, chlorine is the number one chemical in our tap water that can be harmful to the plants. And a lot of that dissipates overnight. So if you want to water your Calathea or your Dracaenas that you know are sensitive on a given day, just make sure you fill up your water bucket the night before. Um, and that's going to be a nice way to give it better water without necessarily using distilled or filtered. So that is the last of our questions here. 
we are going to get to the moment that we've all been waiting for, and that is the giveaway winner. So for those of you who were not partaking in the giveaway, um, we are giving away a, and we'll just showcase them here. Right here is the variegated ficus benjamina, a very beautiful plant. You'll notice that the leaves in this guy are very thin, but the beautiful pastel looking colors. These plants are great. This is the weeping fig. These can grow into full on trees eventually. So that's a great one that I recommend to anybody interested in a new ficus in their life. Now, the second plant that's going to be part of the giveaway is the beautiful philodendron birkin right here. You notice that beautiful variegation in the leaves. And these guys right here, as beautiful as they are, they are quite easy to care for. So you don't have to worry about getting yourself into a plant that you won't know what to do with. But last but not least here, this is my personal favorite plant. We have our ficus teneki, and you can see how beautiful these guys are. The ficus teneki, although small now in these six inch pots, will grow into a full on tree eventually. At home, if you're giving it the right care, you can see it get as tall as six to eight feet eventually. So we have some great plants to give away. Those three are the ones part of this giveaway. Now I am using the wonderful technology here from commentpicker.com to make sure that we are given a random selection of the individual that's going to be winning this. And we will let it do its sorting out. And here we have it, folks. Our winner is Anna Weather Wax for the three, the Ficus Benjamina, the Ficus Teneki, as well as the Philodendron Birkin. Congratulations to Anna Weather Wax. If you are not currently in the chat, we will be contacting you soon. If you would like your plants delivered, that is something that we offer, and we're happy to deliver your plants to you. So Anna Weatherwax, congratulations on winning our giveaway. And for those of you who didn't win, thank you so much for participating. It was really fun to see all of the interested individuals in our beautiful plants that we have here. Um, we're going to be doing more of these in the future, so do keep an eye out on our Instagram. We like the giveaways. Um, and we know that it gets people excited. So if there's anything in the future that you think would be a fun plant to give away, feel free to reach out and be like, hey, I've been wanting this plant. I can't afford this plant or I'm just not in the market for buying it. It would be awesome if it was part of a giveaway in the future. Let us know. We're always receptive to those comments. And thank you to everybody who came out for this. Um, it was great to answer your questions. And as always, if you do have questions, direct message us here, send us an email. You don't just, you know, leave with your plant and that's the end of the relationship. Um, you shop at Chicago Plants because we are here to help. And whether it's me or Maggie or Jackie or another individual who's here in the store, everybody's very knowledgeable and always willing to help you find the right plant that's going to survive in your home. So thank you guys again. This has been a lot of fun. We'll be doing more of these in the future. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your Sundays. And we'll see you in the shop.